Good morning, everyone. I'm sure people will join in and let's begin. These times of crisis have shown corporate India that our biggest investment has to be in human capital. The value of an individual employee has to now be seen in terms of not only their skills and knowledge, but also their adaptability and overall health. It is imperative for companies to recognize this and work on nurturing their human capital. This is why Jobsfera is organizing a masterclass with Raksha Agarwal, Head Talent Attraction, SAP, on how to manage human capital today besides for human needs. Well, let me introduce Raksha Agarwal for you all. Raksha is a seasoned talent acquisition leader with experience of building high-performing teams across AMIA and APAC geographies. With 17 plus years of professional experience, she has been a trusted advisor and partner to leaders of best-in-class high-tech global companies like Apple, Amazon, and Honeywell. As a member of the talent acquisition leadership team, she has developed and executed talent attraction strategies across professional, entry-level, and leadership hiring. She has also led multiple HR projects reflecting business priorities for quick talent ramp-up, development of niche COEs, organization design, etc. During her career, she is also, Raksha was also based out of UK and Singapore for different recruiting assignments. She is currently heading talent at attraction function for SAP in India and technology recruiting for SAP in APAC. Over to you, Raksha. All please keep yourself muted and we'll, we'll take questions after the session. Thank you, Sharnita. Yes. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for joining today. Uh, it's a very interesting topic that I've been asked to speak upon, you know, how to manage human capital today uh, besides for business needs. Uh, why does this become important? You know, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to one of the toughest times in the history of possibly uh, this generation and all of us living today. It's the toughest times which has shuttered many businesses all over the world. The humanitarian crisis is so extraordinary and fierce for employers that the stress and the worry levels of the employers have also increased to a record high. Organizations are choosing furloughs, organizations are choosing, choosing hiring freezes over outright laying off people. You know, and they, while there are some sectors like online retail, online grocery, et cetera, which have shown the need to hire people, but there are other sectors like hospitality, uh, like travel, et cetera, which have been hugely hit and have had to take extreme steps in this situation. All of this leads us to something that, you know, what is, is one of the greatest challenges for all of us during this lifetime. And re researchers have shown that the way organizations manage their people in this time of crisis or have managed people in the times of crisis makes the greatest difference. So obviously the biggest question that comes here is how do organizations manage the right decisions for their businesses. While they are anticipating for the future, they are looking at the crisis that is they are currently in. They also need to be compassionate about their employees, about their people. And when I'm saying people, it's not only employees, it's also about their partners, about their customers, etc., who have made the organization achieve the successes it has achieved till date. You know, and all of this an organization has to do while they know that everyone around is feeling a sense of uncertainty. It becomes imperative, you know, that the decisions are taken, taken which are quick, the decisions which are taken which are unprecedented. Things have to happen on the flow, on the on the fly. You know, how do you, how does an organization or a CEO or a leader? keep their firms operating is also one of the biggest challenges here. And I'm giving this context because while we talk about how to manage human capital, it becomes extremely important that we know that there are other challenges also that a leader is facing. You know, So one, obviously, how do they keep their firms operating? And second, 
how do they keep their employees welfare in the center of everything that they do it's the top of their mind priority where do you start that brings us to a question of where do you start you know and i'll just start presenting my i will share my screen here so where do you start you know there's so much that you can see you know we call human capital human resources people etc etc and there's so many parts that have to be put together so first of all i think it is very important for us to understand that there's no way to overcome covid-19 by operating with business as usual if we say you know it's business as usual and this is how we will operate we are fooling ourselves businesses have to change how do they change they have to identify what's most essential for them what are the things that are important you know there's there's a lot of good to have things in any organization but we need to identify what is important and if i talk specifically in terms of human capital there are multiple things that an organization has been doing to keep their employees engaged to keep their employees productive to keep their employees associated with that organization to be their brand ambassadors and so on to cook to contribute to the growth of the organization you know and to get employees to do all of these things there are multiple things that an organization or multiple organizations focus on but now it is a time when you need to focus on what is essential identify those areas communicating persuasively is the second important point you know so the start point is one identify what is essential second communicate persuasively there are tough decisions there are difficult situations that we are all in and it needs a lot of communication how do you communicate and what is the persuasion that you have you've taken a decision it could be a tough decision you know letting go of people asking people to take a pay cut asking people to go on furloughs etc but there has to be a passion there has to be a persuasion and a need why you doing that and that has to come out very clearly then you have to act decisively you know as i said the decision how fast we take decisions during this crisis is going to impact the way an organization is going to show up post this crisis again all of this will again come back to the fact that how organizations treat employees today will have a big effect on whether employees will choose to join that organization in future you know when the when when the hiring resumes when business is start getting back to the new normal because in my mind i don't think there's going to be ever a place where we were operating before the crisis hit us so at that point of time it will everybody would look at how did the organization treat their employees it is extremely difficult to consider you know couple of things for from an organization's perspective the current state of employee well being is so much uncertainty there's so much chaos there's so much of uh, worry around us you know so assess what is employee's current well being and then to manage what employers and employees can control so everything can't be controlled if you go back and ask somebody when will this pandemic end nobody knows nobody has an answer to that how would we come out of it yes we know there are steps that many organizations or each organization is taking but you know what exactly which step would work which would not work there are no answers to that so there are two things one assess the current state of what is the employee well being and then figure out what are the things that can be controlled and you know a lot of studies have been done you know and this is not only during this pandemic but in the past also because change and uncertain situation and crisis have been a part of the way the entire economies operate so as per studies you know the best way is to react swiftly and then keep adapting and i've been talking about this again and again because that is the most important thing today the need of the r is to have ultimate agile response a kind of situation where you are highly flexible collaborative iterative in your approach you know and that is what a lot of organizations have been developing over years it's not that you know you not developed the way to be uh, can i request everyone to please go on mute
thank you leaders you know so in the current situation you know we you've all been hearing about digital transformation ways to collaborate digital tools etc so while digital transformation is important it is also the human or the workforce transformation that we all should be focusing on you know the biggest asset of any organization is people so there are multiple measures that are being put in place but what i would say is that the way we you know all of us say that if you have to know a person you should watch the person perform under or operate under stress and that is i think true for an organization today organizations respond response the speed of decision making the way it reacts the way it communicates and the way it demonstrates its values are the ones which will be the key differentiators no all of this leads us to a very important point so employee experience is becoming more and more important this is the cornerstone of people strategy of human capital strategy for a lot of organizations i work for sap i know at sap we consider employee experience to be a north star and it's not only about employee experience it's also about customers partners etc but here we're talking specifically about employee experience Citrix, American Express, just to name a few organizations. You know they understand that the conversations between a CHRO and the CEOs have changed now. It is now getting built on a simple equation: the better the employee experience, better the business results are. Because coming back, you know, a happy employee or the kind of experiences that you create for an employee are the ones that drive the performance, that drive the attachment to an organization. so it becomes extremely important to identify the moments that matter in an employee's life cycle from right from the time that we start connecting with the candidate for a possible opportunity with an organization to the time that employee leaves the organization we need to focus on each of the moments each of the experiences that are getting created because it's all about experience and if you go back and you know you talk about your personal life here you know you are happy to spend a few bucks extra for an experience that you get in a particular place you know you get into a you get into a store for buying simple thing like a grocery you see the store is dirty there's nobody to attend to you etc would you ever go back to that store may not be in all likelihood you would not want to go back to that store you would only want to enter a store where it's at least clean there's somebody whom you can talk to or who helps you with you know your buying needs etc so when experience is so important for us in our daily lives it also extends to our workplaces and it becomes all the more important because you know we are forced into an experiment across the globe employees and employers are forced into an experiment of working remotely there are a lot of organizations which have this hesitance of a resistance to remote working or work from home as we call it but now they are standing face to face with a situation where they need to adopt to remote working they need to see that their employees are working remotely and make that happen so while all of this you have to create an experience and that's where the digital transformation comes into play your technology enablement for the employees to be able to perform their jobs is extremely important how are you communicating with them how are you responding to their needs it's not about reaction here but about responding to the needs how quick is the decision making how agile is your organization these are things which are you know creating employee experiences and this is not only true for and this is not true only when you know the time crisis it is also true when you have your normal times because employee experience is extremely important at at all times becomes all the more prominent and important at this particular time right moving on to the next part each organization has to look at a people first approach any strategy any decisions that are being taken you know as i said employee experience is the cornerstone of the strategy but people first approach has to be taken 
that is what is going to be defining the great organizations or the organizations of the future. We've all heard enough about it, but what it primarily means is that, you know, if anything, if a decision has to be taken, it has to be taken keeping employee well-being in mind and ensuring at the same time that the business continuity is in place. It becomes important that you identify what are things which your people, who are your biggest assets need. We need to change maybe a business model to operate and survive in this environment. Yes, that's the need of the hour. But how are people going to be affected with the change? It's something that we need to think about. It's unprecedented times. And again and again, you know, it's about how leaders take those decisions about keeping people at the center of everything that we do. It's not about making policies, making changes to the organization, which would only lead to profits. It can't happen. If your people are not engaged, you will never be able to get the results that you expect to get. So which means that you have to have your people coming in together and that will happen when everyone around you knows that whatever is being done, people's welfare, people's well-being is kept in consideration and that's something that is non-negotiable. Moving on, very, very important. We need to ensure that there's, there's a lot of psychological safety with the people. Now, what does psychological safety mean? Very simply, it means that you're able to voice out whatever you feel, you're able to talk about whatever you feel without the fear of a backlash or without the fear of you being put in spot. That is extremely important again. So you have to create an environment. Organizations or leaders, business have to create an environment where every individual is able to voice out what they feel. And it is extremely important, the ability to be able to voice out. So I was talking to somebody and I have seen that person extremely strong generally. She's a single mom. She's, she's managing two kids. She's managing work everything always under control. And this is a personal experience that I'm talking about. Always under control, everything always under control, well-managed, smiling, always ready to go and take charge of things, somebody like that, you know. And a few days back when I was talking, I saw that person break down. And it was a simple thing that, you know, the person wasn't able to talk about what they were feeling. And why was that? Not because the organization does not provide their organization provides them that safety net, but it was about the fear that was inside her that if I, you know, I have always been somebody like this, you know, now with all of the remote working, all of the uncertainty on my mind, if I show up in a way that I'm not in control, it's going to possibly not be seen as a good thing, or maybe it doesn't go well with my personality type, etc. There were a lot of unknown fears to speak up. So it's important for an organization to create that safety net for people so that they feel that they can speak out. It is extremely important to be able to talk, to communicate, to foster that relationship because communication is the key to be able to foster relationships. So it's important here. The more employees are able to communicate either with their peers, with their juniors, with their leaders, whoever it is, it's just about being able to communicate what they feel because once you communicate, you feel better. You get into, you get solutions for a lot of things which you self-burdening yourselves about. That necessarily may not be true. So leaders, organizations need to focus on creating that environment. Again, one of the very important things which brings which this pandemic brings to us is about upskilling and reskilling. All of us, all of us should be looking at ways on how we can upskill ourselves. How we can upskill and reskill our workforce, our individual selves, and how can we do it is through continuous learning. 
I read something about unconscious, learn, you know, conscious unlearning. So we have to all consciously unlearn and learn what are the ways of navigating, thriving through these this situation. And you know, believe me, if whenever COVID nineteen ends, it's not the end of you know you wouldn't ever see a crisis again. There could be something else that may come up. There could be some other challenge that may come up. When 9-11 happened, we never knew what would it is going to bring. Something else happened, we never knew what it is going to bring. This is a crisis none of us or none of the organizations even foresee, could foresee about it. So it is important to continuously learn. And it is not only about learning what is relevant and what is related to your job but it is also about expanding your horizons. You may be an HR professional today, but if you think you like something which is beyond your domain, it is always good to talk about, learn about it, read about it, figure out mentors who could help you with it. So it is important that you understand, upskill yourself and then reskill yourself as well. You know, it could be as simple as you, it could be completely unrelated field. But how it helps you and how it helps an organization is that, again, it goes back to agile principle. You know, if you, are, if you are an individual who focuses on your development, on your uh, learning new skills, on your development, on your understanding what's the change bringing in, you would be able to adapt to the highly changing environment. You would be able to take that in a positive note and it would bring you to a situation where you are able to add a value to yourself and to the organization. It somewhere links to the resilience that you have in you. Continuous, continuous learning is an important part of being resilient. That is an important thing, an important thought that I would want all of you to take with you. It's not about, yes, I have a job, I'm doing it well, I am putting in extra hours, I am close to burnout of working from home, working remotely, etc. We all are doing that. Everybody around is doing that. What would differentiate you and what would differentiate the organizations is how much of their people can look at developing their skills, how can they look at conscious unlearning and learning new skills. Moving on, I think values have become especially important. We all know that in our personal lives, we all say, you know, this is something that I completely resonate with. These are my values. I can't work for an organization which doesn't match with my values, whose values don't match with my values and so on. We've heard this multiple times because values are the root of our foundation. And it's the roots of the foundation of every organization. The values could be anything. It could be integrity, it could be respect, it could be courage, trust, empathy, anything at all. You know, it just depends on how close you are to your values. How are your values driving your behaviors? So the organizations which focus on fostering the values that they have identified for themselves and ensuring that they stay true to their values are the ones who are going to be coming out stronger out of this. You know, all of whatever we are building here ultimately has to be rooted to the values. If we think openness is a value that we have, if we think trust is a value that we have, if we think respect for each other is a value that an organization has, if it is about integrity, all of whatever the value may be for an organization, it is about staying true to the values. How do you talk to your employees? How do you talk to your partners? How do you talk to your larger customer base? Which is all related to how your organization operates in the framework of the values that you've defined for yourself. Coming to your individual self, also it becomes important. You need to understand, respect each other, respect your colleagues, respect your seniors, respect everybody around you. It becomes important. Have integrity in the way you're working, in the way you are operating. Because you're working remotely, you have all, you, you, you are free to choose your times, you're free to operate the way you want, etc. 
but that does not take away the responsibility that an organization has on you. You are supposed to be doing the work that you're supposed to be doing as an employee of the organization or as the owner of, an organ of a firm that you may have. So it is important that you operate with integrity. So again, how you operate, how your values drive you and how are the values driving an organization it should be the North Star. It's like, you know, a guiding principle. It's like something that you can hold on to when you are in a difficult situation. Can I do this? If it doesn't align to my values, I can't. You know, if somebody asks you to do things which are not related to your values, you would never go ahead and do that. Similarly, for your work and your organization, it is important that they look at how you It is important that how you look at values. And again, I said, it's not only during the crisis. During a crisis time, it becomes even more important. So while the organizations are looking at how they run their businesses, how they ensure that they continue to foster, how do they ensure that they continue to create profits to be able to sustain, they need to ensure that it is around the identified values for themselves, for the organization. Something very different, which I'm now talking about, all of this was about how the employees, how the human capital would be looked at. And there's this very interesting eight trends that I came across on how things would change or the change that we are currently in would bring in. You know, we spoke about employee experience, we spoke about values, we spoke about psychological safety and so on. All of this is leading to some trends that we are going to foresee. And this is related to the organizations and the way they would manage their people. Yeah. And I've picked it up from a website called corporaterebels.com. It's a very interesting website. You can go and have a look at it. So the first thing, the eight trends out of the eight trends, the first trend that we see is that we are moving away from, you know, the organizations would be moving away from only profits to the purpose and values. And also the employees would look at it that way. And we spoke about values just in the slide before. How important are the values? What is the purpose of doing a certain thing that you are doing and how is it adding value? How is it creating an environment for people to be able to trust you, for people to flourish, for people to be able to get associated with you? So it's not only about profit. It's also about giving back to the society. You know, we all hear a lot of activities that organizations are doing how organizations are contributing to the larger global economy or their country's economy and so on. And we feel good about hearing all of that or being associated with organizations which do that. So it's about moving away only from profit to purpose and values. Second, very important is from hierarchical pyramids. You know, we, we know the organizations are formed in a certain way. There's, there's a pyramid that is built, et cetera, et cetera. From all of these, it's about networking with the teams. All of us have been operating remotely for over two months now, possibly. We know how important it is to be able to network with people, which we don't realize when we are in office. On an average day in office, an individual will interact at least with 10 to 14 people. And that's the bare minimum, 10 to 14 people. Imagine if you have to talk to 10 to 14 people every single day when you're operating remotely and you don't see them you will have to make that effort of picking up your phone and calling them or chatting with them. So it's important that we leverage the network of teams. Somebody sitting in different teams, somebody sitting in a different location, work, but they all work together towards a common goal. Third, from a directive leadership to a supportive leadership. The leaders will not give directions. They would like people who can work with them. Rather than being told what to do, they would want people who can talk to them about what should we do. We think this is going to work. We think this is going to be the best thing to do. And the leader supports. Even employees are going to move to that. You know, they don't, they wouldn't want somebody to come in and just be giving them instructions. They would want who, somebody who can nurture their thoughts, who would believe in them because it's 
also about adapting it's about changing it's about agility all of this cannot come if you have directive leadership all of this can be built only through supportive leadership fourth important point which is the situation on the ground at this point of time you can't plan and predict everything you can plan for certain situations you can predict certain situations but all of it might just not be what you were expecting it to be or what you were planning for i'm sure nobody in the world planned for a crisis like covid-19 but here we are in the middle of it four five months into it you know and what it is helping us understand it it is all about experimenting you are in a situation you are in a difficult situation you are in a situation which is constantly changing you need to learn to experiment and adapt and if i go back to one of my earlier points you know where i said it's about reacting swiftly and then keep adapting to it you know decisions may go wrong yes we will come out of it we will learn from it we will move again a decision has to be taken it cannot be you know we take forever for taking a decision that's not how the situations are going to be moving to the fifth point from rules to control to freedom and trust so in an office when you in an office environment or in a lot of environments you go you know even for for that matter when when there are colleges schools etc there are a lot of rules around it you know there's a lot of control that and that's how all of us have been seeing things around us you know in a working environment we will have to see from rules and controls it's more to about for freedom and trust as an employee i may choose to work from 7 am to 12 am then take a 3 hour break and then log in back at 3 pm to 4 pm 5 pm whatever my timings are it's about that freedom to operate the way i want to operate and the trust managers leaders colleagues will have to you know trust each other reverse it and as an employee you will have to trust your organization in saying you know yes what they're doing is for the benefit for the welfare for the well-being of its employees for ensuring that the organization continues to operate in the best way to be able to earn profits and sustain its businesses because that's what all the organizations are here for from centralized authority to distributed decision making extremely important because unless you have this you cannot be agile you cannot react swiftly you cannot do all of that you know so it's about the flexibility that you want to bring in an organization if everything has to be decided by one person on the top you know it cannot happen because everything will go and get stuck at that table however how much ever the person is efficient but if there are multiple decisions to be taken at a central level it does slow down a lot of things and slowing down in a situation like this is not important so it will be about distributed decision making which will bring in more responsibility to for the individuals it will be about how you talk about it how you bring things you know how you decide on certain things so from a centralized authority to a distributed decision making is not only about an organization moving into that structure but it is also about each individual in the organization assuming more responsibility more decisiveness seventh from secrecy to radical transparency very difficult to achieve but that is exactly what a lot of progressive organizations would be looking at a lot of decisions are taken a lot of situations a lot of moves happen why they happen and if you remember starting of the talk i said you know there's a need to be able to communicate persuasively to act decisively and that can happen if you have transparency if you're able to communicate well with the reasons on why a certain decision has been taken it would be appreciated all employees all of us all of us understand that their the needs could be different at different times and their reasons of certain decisions could be different but this is why we would all do this so it becomes important this is this is a longish journey from moving to from secrecy to radical transparency but this is how it would be looking like organizations are adopting this the eighth one which is again something with related and very close to the function that i represent talent acquisition or talent attraction the way we call it at sap is about moving from 
prescribed job descriptions to talents and mastery. It relates back to something that I said, upskilling and reskilling yourself. You cannot straight jacket yourself into saying, this is what I do and this is all I will do and this is all I know. Each of us would have to look at saying, yes, I know this, this is what has been my strength, this has been my core area of work, but how do I develop something else? So there could be talent that you have and there could be something that you are mastering. And organizations would look at people who can don multiple hats in multiple situations. I may not be a program manager in a, on a regular day in my job, but yes, I need to know on how I manage certain situations, how, how do I get people together, how do I run with certain things. If that is something that I know, I become important in certain situations when an organization is faced with. So these are all of the trends that I see coming in. I've spoken, I've read a lot about it. I've spoken to a lot of people. I have attended webinars like you're doing right now. I think this is extremely important. Again, it is about identifying where you start. It is about figuring out what is important. What is the most essential things to an organization? It could be any organization. It could be an educational institute. It could be your own startup. It could be a well-set organization. It is important. So coming back and just wrapping up what my thoughts are, it is important to identify for the leaders, for the organizations that how do they keep operating and how do they keep the employee well-being in their minds and in putting employees first putting employees' experience as the cornerstone of their strategy. The organizations which will be remembered, you know, when all of this gets over, will be the organizations that are, how have they treated their employees? You know, all of us, are, there are multiple measures which is, being in put, which is being put in place by the entire world, hoping that this crisis will end soon. And when all of this will be over, and we hope it is soon, every organization will be remembered for what they did for their employees during this time of crisis. And that is going to be the differentiating factor for them. Thank you. Over to you, Sharnita. Thank you, Raksha. I think we'll take questions now. We have about three questions that's come on the chat window. And if any of you have questions, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself. So let's take these questions that that have come you've touched upon these points uh, what are the steps i can take as a manager to show that i i and the company care for our people uh, what are the steps that as a manager you can take to show that you and the company care for your people yes okay i think the foremost thing here is about communicating about creating that psychological safety net to people and being very transparent in your communication. You know, there are certain things that you don't have an answer to, your organization does not have an answer to, and employees would understand that. So communicate at the risk of over communication, communicate, be transparent, be there truly for them. I think these are the things that are the cornerstone of the current situation. Your employees need to be able to trust you. Because trust is the most important ingredient right now for you to be able to connect with your employees and make them believe what you're saying or what your organization is saying or doing is in the best interest. Okay, we have another one uh, mm -hmm. from Namrita, which says, how do I get the HR and business head to create a plan to invest more in human capital? Okay, so I think uh, how do you get to your business and an HR head to create that would be to be able to showcase some of the success of different organizations, build up certain case studies. It goes back to the simple principle. Employee ex better the employee experience, better the business results. But if you go back and just tell them this, it's not going to help. So you will have to pull out certain cases, figure out certain examples in the industry where you've actually had the chance or where you actually can build a case saying, you know, these are the results that we've seen. 
which where employees where, where organizations which have focused on their employees and creating employee experiences creating policies keeping employee well-being in mind have been more successful and there are enough examples there are enough researches and studies that have been done around it this actually started the focus on employee experience actually this term came in somewhere around 2013 2014 and from then on there have been multiple studies there have been multiple uh, forums there have been multiple uh, webinars seminars etc where this this has been talked about this has been proven as an adopted model in certain organizations and another one uh, what are the top 5 things the company can do to make employees understand that they are important according to you top 5 things that the company can do right so i think it is about identifying the moments that matter to an employee you know if it is about onboarding a new employee or even interviewing somebody for becoming an for for a possible opportunity at your organization identifying which are those moments give me a moment please sure sorry remote working and work from home experience yeah, actually yes so yes so identifying the moments that are important for an employee in the employee's life cycle if it is about situation with that they're currently face to face with which is remote working what are the things that matter to an employee when the employee is working remotely you know figuring out that and you can do that from during doing surveys and there are a lot of surveys available right now which help us understand the health check of employees you know so identify those those could be as simple as understanding if the employees feel well supported is there is there a counseling or is there a external vendor or something that you've created an employee assistance program where they can dial in and talk there are multiple things so identifying the moments and for each organization those moments can be different but again identifying those moments it could be about some people utilizing this time when they have some extra time on hand i you know to be able to train themselves better is that a need that employees have are you looking at that are you looking at ensuring that they have the required flexibility so there could be multiple points so for each employee it could be different so for me to be able to list down which are those five things that an organization can do would be difficult but if you identify which are those moments in the employee's life cycle which matter to the employee you would be able to figure out those things but again you know communication is extremely key to everything that you're doing being able to communicate being able to act decisively if you see that an if, if you as a as, as as an employee see that your leaders are not able to take decisions you yourself would get jittery about it you know because yes the leaders may not have all the information that they need to take a decision but that is exactly the situation that we are in we need to take decisions with the limited amount of information that is available you know and when we take the decision we need to be very we need to communicate that with full transparency and confidence i think these are two key things but again you know other things could be about identifying the areas which matter to your employees thank you raksha for interacting with business leaders from across industries and giving us inputs on the best ways to wade through this crisis by managing the people who work for them with sensitivity and skill thank you very much and i would also like to thank all of you for attending this master class thank you